Hello everyone, and welcome to the Spotlight Series from the National Cryptologic Museum. I'm Rob Simpson, the museum's librarian, and this is Spencer Allenbaugh, our collections manager. Now, you may recall that Spencer did an artifact spotlight on what we call the Napoleon letter, because mm -hmm. it's the only one we have. Uh, and that was, that, that letter was from Napoleon to his son, and it was from 1806. Uh, that, that spotlight is on our Facebook page, and it was posted in May of 2021, if you want to go back and watch it. So that was 1806. Mm -hmm. We have a letter from the reign of Louis XIV from 1706, and a, a letter from the reign of Louis XV from 1726. And I'm going to talk about each of them individually, but then I'm going to go back because there's some commonalities here that are really interesting, and they actually fit in with what you had said in the Napoleon one. Okay. Um, so in 1706, um, Louis XIV was still reigning. Louis reigned for 73 years almost, 72 plus years. He was the longest reigning monarch in European history. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with reigning that long is you outlive all of your heirs. Mm. So this letter is signed by Philippe d'Orléans. He's an important person because at the end of Louis XIV's life, he had to name a new heir. Um, it was in his great-grandchild um, lineage, and he was only five years old. So when Louis XIV died, the five-year-old took the throne, but in a monarchy, especially an absolute monarchy, a five-year-old can't reign, obviously. And so in his will, Louis XIV set up a regency council. Mm -hmm. And so this council would rule France until he came of age, until he became 16 years old. Now, Philippe d'Orléans played the, played the game better than anybody else. And so he was on the council, but he actually usurped the council and reigned by himself until um, Louis, became, Louis XV became 16 years old. Interesting. Yeah. And so this letter is um, coded but we'll talk about how it's coded later. This one is from 1726. So at this point, Louis the, Four Louis the 15th is on the throne and Philippe has uh, graciously retired. This one is in the name of Louis and it's countersigned by Flurian. And Flurian was the foreign minister to the French ambassador to Holland. And this letter, because it's been decrypted and partially translated, and it was partially translated for the sale of the document, um, it, we know that it was about a uh, conflict between Holland and the Holy Roman Empire um, and the French efforts to keep that conflict from breaking out into war through diplomacy. So wow. when I say there's a similarity between these two letters, you had mentioned in the Napoleon piece um, do you remember what you said about how interested Napoleon was in codes? Yeah, if I remember correctly, he was not that interested yeah, exactly. in codes at all. <laughs> so previously, and you had talked about the Le Grand Chiffre, the, the Grand Cipher, mm -hmm. which the French kings before the French Revolution used. I believe that's what these are because that's what it looks similar to. So wow. if you look at each line of the letter, it starts with some text and then it immediately goes into numbers separated mm -hmm. by colons. And the letter, the lines are separated a good amount so that when you decrypt it, you can write in the plain text. And so what we have here was this original, this letter is originally written would have just been lines of numbers with wide spaces. And what we have now is lines of numbers with wide spaces where letters, the words are written inside. So this one's 20 years later, same exact format. Wow. Just larger and easier to read for my old eyes. Um, and so you have lines of numbers separated by periods or colons, and, uh, and then the words by the scribe who, who um, decrypted it at the other end, written in between the lines. That's really cool. And not a surprise, uh, these came to us from David Kahn. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, we actually have a letter from David Kahn to the uh, National Cryptologic Museum Foundation, or what they were at the time, uh, you know, saying that I bought these letters in 1964 when I was living in Paris. Wow. Right. So. What a find. It, it is amazing. And, and one of the things as a, as a book person, um, you'll see that the paper mm -hmm. is in fantastic shape. Yeah. Because it's old. Older paper is generally in better shape than newer paper, especially from the 19th century, because it was higher quality. It was made with like linen um, and 
as books became to be more mass marketed, the paper had to be made of something more than linen because it was too expensive. And so that's when they started using wood pulp and really poor wood pulp. And so that's why books from the, especially from the 1800s deteriorate so fast. Gotcha. Wow. Did you have anything else to, uh, to add? The only thing I, I do want to touch on is maybe we should point out the difference between what would make this part of the library and what would make that Napoleon letter more of an artifact. That's a fantastic point um, because um, it's not black and white. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a gray area. Uh, so yes, we, the, you did the Napoleon letter as an artifact mm -hmm. and I'm doing these letters as, uh, as library. So it basically comes down to why do you have it? Do you have it for its artifactual value, meaning just the object as an object, or do you have it for its intellectual value, the, the content that it, that it holds? Mm -hmm. um, and then there's an easier answer, which is the Napoleon letter was already framed. It was. <laughs> so that makes it an artifact, because I can't put it in a folder. Exactly. Um, but yeah, that's really the, the, the biggest difference, is that you know, can you conceive of, a, of a, a scenario where a scholar would come in and need to take this letter out and read it? And the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. if they're researching this specific thing. So that kind of makes it a library. And, and because we're a small organization, like if we were a larger institution, we would have a library and a special collections yeah. and an archive. Mm -hmm. and so, so we kind of merge all those into one. But yeah, that's, that's why these are library items. And um, until you unframe it, <laughs> the Napoleon letter belongs to you. Looks like it's staying with me. <laughs> Anything else? No, uh, that's all other than say thank you for watching and have a great day.